another edition of ITW, a show that's going to help you enhance instruction through innovation. As you see, we have a brand new host with us. David, is he still on the show? Um, but you know, with him getting married and everything, I think he's somewhere um, breaking in his heels he's somewhere. Or something. He's he's yeah, busy. he's doing something like that. His feet hurt. I don't know what's going on. But that's okay. David, he's actually still here. He's behind the camera. Uh, but Rebecca here, she is our new guest host for um, ITW. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the hey, show. Allegedly, I'm a guest. Allegedly. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. 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 I think we're going to be seeing a lot more, Rebecca. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm looking forward to this. So this week, we're going to be talking about effective parent communications, different ways ways, different tools that you can use to communicate with parents. Why is it important? What is the best method of doing? So make sure you stick around for this week's edition of ITW. So for effective parent communications, we have come up with three R's that we think are going to be very helpful for you to follow. So the first R is relationships. Cue the dating music. Yes, relationships. <laughs> Okay, so relationships with parents need to be very, very fluid and consistent. It's so important to have a great relationship with parents, and one of the ways to do that again is via communication. Exactly, and also it's important for parents to know the expectations for the different grade levels. I know that some parents, when their students are coming into maybe kindergarten or something like that, they're not sure what to expect. And it's important when you have that communication with the parents, you're now informing of them what the child is going to be doing, what the basic expectations are. Kindergarten parent, right here, okay? And then as, you know, obviously as kids get older, they're gonna go ahead and the expectation of the relationship is gonna be different as well as the communication. But regardless, parents need to have that consistent, fluid uh, communication so that they're aware of what's going on in the learning environment. Okay, R number two, rationale. There is a reason that we're doing it. It's not just the box that we're checking off. We're not just doing it to say that we did it. We want to build that relationship. We want to make sure that our parents are involved and we want to include them in the learning process of a child. Absolutely, they, they want a genuine relationship. They know if you're not being sincere and again, just checking it off. So another thing to consider is that you're having consistent, fluid conversation, that you're not just putting um, just one little item for your parent that you're actually being personalized for kids. Another thing you should think about is your parental access. How do your parents receive communication? Do they have an email? If they don't have email, you probably don't want to email. If they all have cell phones, then you might want to consider social media because they may have access to it. And that may be impacted by the grade level. If you're a high school person with three preps, three groups of parents to try to communicate with, um, you might just you might use multiple tools that to, so that your parents can access it that way. But if you're an elementary tool teacher and you just have one set of parents to contact, then email might be more effective um, or social media. But you may just use one or two. So you kind of have to figure out what work, what works best for you. The other thing to think about is student expectation. So when you're communicating with parents, a lot of parents and a friend of mine, she didn't know what her kindergartner should know. She did. I have other friends who they don't know what an eighth grader for social studies will know. So just make sure that when you're communicating with them, you're giving them those details because they want to help their child succeed. All right, finally, R number three, reflection. With anything that you do, you want to reflect. You want to look back at what you did and see, is what I'm doing effective? Is what I'm using effective? This is no different. Listen, don't do something that doesn't work over and over and over again. It doesn't make sense. So make sure that your parents are actually accessing your information. And if they're not, again, think about that parental access. Is it because they don't have an email address? Is it because you have the wrong email address? Is it because they just don't use Facebook? Who knows what it could be, but you really have to get that feedback from parents so that you are effectively communicating to them. All right, so what are the tools that you can actually use? Social media, everybody's on it, most people. So some platforms you can use, Twitter, a lot of parents on Twitter, a lot of kids are on Twitter. Also, Facebook. Lots of classes have Facebook pages where it's a closed group, so you're not actually sharing each other's information. It can still stay, stay private, and 
parents have access to all the information. Another one would be Instagram. Instagram, obviously, mostly photos, but this is a great way to show off all the great things that are happening in your classroom. Another one that, that, that's real simple and basic is, of course, email. We all have an email account. There's something that, if, if your parents have one too, you can just send that out. You can create some groups um, in your, your email and you can just send out emails to, to those groups um, whenever you want to share your newsletter with your parents. Yeah, and so if you want to get kind of decoy, sly, like spy-like, you want to use Remind 101 or Google Voice texting. So this allows you to text and reach parents who might not have access to email, internet, etc., but they do have access to internet via their phone. So this is a great way for you to hide and be a decoy, but still give out information for parents. Right. And the next one, of course, is phone call. Now, this is, now it takes a little bit more time, but it's yeah. worth it because it, it's, it's a conversation that you get to have with the parents. You get to build a relationship. It's that voice diverse, person to person communication that you have with the parents where you can talk to them um, about their child and, and it's not just a, um, some text that they see coming across their phone or on an email. So, so phone calls are always an effective way to communicate with parents. What? I have to talk to people? That's right. Oh, no. All right, so last couple last things you can always do are having some type of newsletter. Um, this newsletter, you can send it out via email or post it to your, your Facebook page, whatever communication platform that works best for your parents. Um, and then you can also do a website. Right, and websites are easy because you can just get parents the same URL and they can just go to that every week and you can just send them a reminder just to continue to go to the same place each week um, to get this information um, about what's going on with their child and with the class. So those are just a few tool options that we think will be very effective for you as you try to communicate with parents. Make sure you check one of them out and see which one works best for you. And regardless of what tool you use, ensure that your parents know that that's an your tool that you're using. Well, that's it, Becca. Show one. Show one. Show one. Good job. Nicely done. Round of applause for Becca. Um, as always, we're going to send a reminder to you guys, don't forget to uh, vote for our Innovative Teacher of the Month. We had a few extra ones coming in. We want to thank everybody for sending those votes, but we want, again, always want to respect another what teachers are doing in the classroom. Please make sure that you send those votes in. Um, we also have our CLM log where we extend the conversation, things that we couldn't get to in ITW. We try to take it a little bit further in the CLM log, so make sure you check that out um, this week. And if you have any questions, go ahead, feel free to email that guy, okay? And then also, if you're interested, you can go ahead and contact us at CMS to the Core on Twitter. So that is a fantastic episode of ITW, and we look forward to seeing you next time.